How's it going ladies and gentlemen? Let's talk about headspace. Now I have a go and a no-go gauge and I just built this AR and I want to check headspace. So I check headspace anytime I put a new barrel or a new bolt together. So this is a new build, so I'm checking the headspace. If I swap out the bolt, check the headspace. If I swap out the barrel, I check the headspace. Now there might be some controversy and I might get roasted for this, but um, I've done this thousands of times. <clears throat> you know, in the, in the army, I was a battalion armorer for 501st. It's an airborne infantry uh, battalion. And every time before we would deploy and after we would get back from deployment, we had to gauge all the weapons. You can imagine how many M4s a battalion has. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we'd also check, you know, there's barrel gauges, they're all kind of gauges, but I've done this thousands of times. And so for me, I kind of don't have a choice. I have the gauges, it's just, I always do it now. Um, but that being said, I know guys who have built plenty of rifles, never gauged them once and have never had a problem. So, I, I, I guess it's sort of personal preference. It's definitely recommended to do it at the factory. Um, they should be doing this on new barrels. But, you know, in fact, this barrel and this bolt come from different manufacturers. Um, as long as they're both made to mill spec, you're probably fine, to be honest. But then again, there's always issues from the factory. Maybe something slipped past their QA or their quality check people and maybe you got something bad. And so I just always do it, I always have. Um, what, the di what these gauges mean are inside your chamber, um, it sort of tapers down at some point. They call it, there's a point in that taper they call it the dead line. You don't need to know all the technical stuff about it, but basically from that point in the taper down in your chamber, <laughs> to the bolt face is what you're measuring. So you have a go and a no-go gauge. They do make a field gauge, I don't use one. Okay, here's the go gauge. Basically, you wanna start with your go gauge, put that in your chamber, and let the bolt close. The bolt should close all the way on your go gauge. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I can do, I can do the go gauge with a live round. I would say don't do that just because, you know, I guess technically you could, but the live round, the brass is soft and if it's getting forced in there and you don't realize it, you could be failing your go gauge, but a live round actually does, the bolt does close all the way on the live round, but that's because you're mashing the brass in there to make it fit. Um, I guess you could take the live round out and inspect the bullet, inspect the casing, but I'd much rather, I mean, I think I got these, this set of gauges for like 60 bucks, I mean, and besides, with the no-go, the live round's not gonna help you with the no-go, so you wanna put the no-go gauge in, and the bolt shouldn't close. Now don't jam it, don't use your forward assist and like make it close. Now you can see here with the no-go gauge that the bolt actually didn't close all the way like it would with the go gauge. Now with the go gauge, I didn't show you a close up but it closes all the way as if it was a, a round that you're expecting. Now with the field gauges, if it does close on your no-go, <laughs> I mean, it's not good, but you take a field gauge and you put that in there. If it closes on the field gauge, don't shoot the rifle. Don't shoot that weapon. Um, the field gauge is, is it's basically another no-go gauge, but it's just that maximum level, that maximum tolerance. If it closes on the no-go gauge, but doesn't close on the field gauge, you're okay. I've always been fine with just a go gauge and a no-go gauge. It closes on the go. It doesn't close on the no-go. And that means it is a pass. That sounds <laughs> confusing. If it doesn't close on the no-go, it passes. Does that make sense?
I'm actually pretty interested. If y'all wouldn't mind commenting below, I kind of want to get an idea of how do how many people do you test the headspace on your rifles? Anytime you change a bolt, anytime you change the barrel, any new build. I want to see who tests the head their headspace and who doesn't. You know, I'm sure there's people that never have and have never had a problem, but uh, I think it'd be good for even people watching this video to be able to go through those comments and just see who, how many people do this and don't and if they've ever had issues with it. So thanks for watching. Neck bone out.